I am going to allow myself to read a brief introduction to the subject, as well as a review of our guest lecturer, first in Spanish and then in English, and then we will begin with Tiziano's talk. El concepto ambiental de soluciones basadas en la naturaleza ha sido identificado recientemente por la Unión Europea como un marco estratégico para ayudar al objetivo de desarrollo de ciudades sostenibles. Las soluciones basadas en la naturaleza son ampliamente reconocidas como respuestas efectivas a los nuevos desafíos urbanos, como la adaptación al cambio climático, la resiliencia y la sostenibilidad, y que pueden tener el potencial de cumplir simultáneamente con los objetivos ambientales, sociales y económicos. Son acciones ya conocidas, inspiradas, apoyadas o copiadas de la naturaleza, tanto el uso y la mejora de las soluciones existentes para los desafíos como la exploración de soluciones más novedosas para recrear ciudades y comunidades urbanas. El doctor Cristiano Cataño es arquitecto egresado de la primera generación de la Asociación de Arquitectos de Italia, profesor de la Cátedra Nacional bajo el Plan de Talento Shanghai 1000 en la Universidad de Tongji, donde ha establecido el Laboratorio de Futuros Ambientales en la Facultad de Diseño e Innovación. En Italia tiene la calificación científica nacional como profesor asociado en diseño arquitectónico y desde el 2007 enseña en el Departamento de Ingeniería Civil y Arquitectura de la Universidad de Pavia en Italia. Ha sido profesor visitante del Departamento de Estudios y Planificación Urbana del MIT en 2016-2017 bajo la supervisión del profesor Tuni Lee. Director fundador del Laboratorio de Arquitectura y Estudios Urbanos de China. Desde el 2012, Tiziano trabaja entre el contexto italiano y chino, tanto en investigación como en educación. Su investigación se centra en el diseño como un proceso para crear entornos, contextos de participación y compromiso social que aborden condiciones contemporáneas como el cambio climático, la globalización, la tecnología y la urbanización. Ha sido conferencista en universidades e instituciones internacionales en Europa, Brasil, Chile, Chile, Rusia, Estados Unidos y China, y es autor de numerosas publicaciones científicas. Tiziano Cataño, PhD, First Class Registered Architect in Italian Architects Association, National Chair Professor under the Shanghai 1000 Talent Plant at Tongji University, where he has been established the Embira Environmental Futures Lab at the College of Design and Innovation. In Italy, he has national scientific qualification as associate professor in architectural design. And in, since 2007, he teach at the Department of Civil Engineering and Architecture, University of Pavia in Italy. He has been visiting professor at MIT Department of Urban Studies and Planning in 2016, 2000. 17 under the supervision of Professor Tuni Lee, founder director of the China Lab for Architecture and Urban Studies since 2012. Tiziano works in between the Italian and Chinese context in both research and education. His research focuses on design as a process to create environments, context of participation and social engagement addressing contemporary conditions such as climate change, globalization, technology, and urbanization. He has lectured in international universities and institutions in Europe, Brazil, Chile, Russia, USA, and China, and is author of several scientific publications. Per favore, benvenuto a Dr. Tiziano Catania. Thank you so much, uh, Pablo, and thank you, Emanuele, to invite me in this uh, webinars. I can see here some uh, Mexican friends and some uh, new friends. So, um, and uh, first, another thing, thank you for the kind uh, presentation, beautiful presentation uh, I received today. So, I'm so happy. Um, I will try to share my um, screen, so 
ok ok so i can start my uh, presentation um, today i would like to share with you um, a topic that is um, pretty interesting from my point of view for uh, both research and practice and uh, it is a topic that uh, uh, started uh, since uh, several uh, uh, years in uh, in uh, Europe and not only and then uh, thanks to my uh, the opportunity that I got to uh, teach and uh, research in uh, in China I tried uh, together with uh, colleagues from China uh, in Shanghai at the university and also uh, the government side uh, to apply in that uh, context so is a uh, renaturing city natural based solution uh, for sustainable urban community so first of all i would like to uh, i would like to start from one uh, uh incipit that uh, is um something that can change during this time that uh, most of us we are in uh, quarantine in uh, actually in italy in the north italy we still have many problems in uh, in the uh, after the outbreak of the of the virus and uh, so i think this topic became even more uh, effective if we think um what happened in this uh, outbreak of the virus in the last uh, uh, few months so in this time we are talking about uh, global recession and climate change and uh, many words such as uh, regeneration consumption conversation uh, aggregation and sustainable growth are the t terms that are in the debate in both practice education and uh, research so what i would like to to try to do is uh, start to understanding and uh, uh, observe what is going on and what does mean uh, this uh, th this situation and uh, un understanding understanding because i got this um, a uh, quote from uh, Tavris and Aronson understanding the first step toward finding solution that will lead to change and redemption we hope this is my hope actually my wish that if we understand the, pro the problem we can find solution uh, to lead uh, some change and redemption the second is the uh, observation so to be curious and to observe uh, what is going on in the different scale, different uh, point of view. I was lucky before this uh, outbreak because I, I, I feel lucky actually, because I had the opportunity to travel in between China and Europe and uh, uh, several times. But now everything is going, will be different and is going different. But uh, what I was uh, observing in that, uh, in that time, I would like to start from this uh, uh, slide that is very well known, is the Earth Overshoot Day, uh, which is actually represent uh, a very simple thing. Uh, the footprint of, uh, the Global Footprint Network National uh, uh, Footprint Accounts in 2019, that means we use 1.75 times of the resource that we have in the earth so i don't have the the update, updated one 2020 but i think the trend is, is the same so almost double of the resource resources that uh, the earth can give us we go into consumption um, so that means that the, if the trend from uh, now ahead go in the same direction we are right in 2020 in 2050 that we will have uh, we will consume three times of the resource that we have in the earth or 
maybe we can change and uh, have a turning point in some month. So very simple images, what uh, I'm observing uh, to, uh, along with, uh, of course, my colleagues, my friends, my students, um, everybody talk about uh, global warming, warming and, and, uh, and climate change. This, uh, the melting of the uh, ice in the North Pole and this, in the Antarctica is uh, very well known. So severe pollution, this is a picture of Shanghai. This is the three towers of the financial district of Shanghai. Look at here, uh, this situation, this is real. I experienced several times this situation in, in, in Shanghai, but not only, also in Milan. And then, um, for example, eight in 10 people in the world are breathing polluted air, air above the uh, uh, WHO safe limits. So. Also, this is another uh, aspect, of quite uh, interesting and also scary. Another, another aspect, uh, the long distance between work and home. Uh, people feel stressed and uh, under pressure to commuting every day just to reach the, the, the place where to work and, uh, and where to live. Or, for example, we are talking about um, cars, electric cars, autonomous cars, or uh, new uh, services like uh, Uber or, or Lyft. But it, always we are talking about cars. So the situation doesn't change. Change the, the vehicle, of course. Uh, uh, electric car could be, uh, cars could be even a little bit more sustainable, but still we are talking about cars. And then we are talking about um, uh, soil erosion or desertification. And uh, the, the land and the earth is the, our primary uh, goods that we have to take care. And beside the, beside the desertification, every year we waste 1.6 billion tons of food while 800 million people go hungry in, in the world. So this is, make me reflect more. This is a, maybe is a very broad observation, very, very huge, very wide, but this is, those are real data. And then, so just to say in many ways, the environmental crisis is a design crisis. As a designer, we have to take our responsibility or our action to uh, try to give some um, perspective, some solution for, uh, for uh, future generation. And uh, in the other side, the designers at time, they do too much because uh, we all live in a designed world. Design actually is uh, uh, basic to all human activity. Every, everything that we do, we are designing. So uh, the design has become the most powerful tool with which man shapes the environment, uh, the society where uh, we live. And this is uh, the Papanek uh, uh, quotation. So what's design? Design, I would like to borrow another quotation from uh, Bruno Munari, which is, uh, was an Italian uh, uh, designer, um, artist, uh, very eclectic person that uh, say, design is a creation of object, events, and environment inspired by the observation of everyday life and that natural phenomenon. And we start to, narrow a little bit, so natural phenomenon. But before to introduce you what I think about, uh, what, what is a natural business solution and what kind of um, path I, I think we can uh, bring for uh, our future cities and for our environment where we live, I would like to share with you a personal criticism. Um, 
in many schools in, uh, in, in around the world, in many uh, uh, publications, in many very important uh, um, design uh, institutions, we are talk, talk about uh, the, in the so-called human-centered design. But I want to list here uh, one uh, uh, quote from uh, Paolo Antonelli, who was the last uh, uh, director of the Triennale of Milan and also is uh, nowadays director of the section of architecture in MoMA. And uh, uh, Paolo say it could just as easily considered synonymous, the human-centered design, with corporation-centered design. Uh, with the attempt and the, 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 the wish to optimize the consumer, consumer experience. So I think that sometimes the human center and design actually reflect a, an old anthropocentric view of the uh, reality. And uh, also who, who invent these uh, this, um, uh, terms of human center design is uh, ideal. Uh, I'm not against them, but uh, uh, I would like to try to renew this, uh, this, uh, the meaning of this uh, human center in design. So, uh, what I can share with you, I think there are uh, some references that are even better. The alternative approach of human center design is uh, restorative design or regenerative design. We can call it in different ways. And uh, from my point of view, a seminal reference, a seminal book uh, was in 2002, uh, Cradle to Cradle, Remaking the Way We Make the Things. Um, it was uh, written, written by uh, the architect uh, McDonald and uh, a chemist, uh, Brogart, and uh, tried to present an integration of design and science together. Uh, in, to make uh, how to make the benefit for the society from uh, every aspect of the of the design so start to uh, to introduce the circularity of the design and of the nature and the technical uh, elements so these two um, uh, author also create a kind of uh, uh, manifesto is uh, designed for, su for sustainability that it was prepared for the expo uh, in, two in, uh, in, in uh, 2000 yes in, uh, in uh, an over where they list a kind of nine uh, rules nine uh, recommendation for uh, the design for sustainability and they try to apply these um, rules in the uh, design of uh, the Anover expo so nowadays, we many, 20 years already passed from that time. And uh, there is another uh, 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 diagram that I want to share with you is, uh, this is come from um, John Maeda with uh, the reinterpretation by Neri Oxman from MIT, in which um, she consider the design as a, uh, not only as an element, nowadays there is not only one discipline, but as a connection and interaction between many uh, disciplines together. We can see here design and science, art and engineering. Um, they gather together economy and philosophy, culture and nature. So, I mean, this is a, uh, it's called a cred uh, cycle of creativity that is uh, very interesting to try to understand that uh, all the, the environment is uh, an entanglement for using a, a terminology of uh, physics, entangled, that uh, everything is connected and uh, interact together. So, wow, now in this uh, kind of uh, uh, very huge uh, frame, design for sustainability, um, there is very complicated uh, situation in the real world. Uh, so we can consider every single design as a positive or negative impact on our environment. So the system 
consider a design as a system of thinking and of element together. So the wishful of thinking can be translated in wishful, wishful of acting. So that means of design. Design in, uh, in, uh, in the Anglo-Saxon, the English word I think uh, is not that powerful our, uh, as, as uh, uh, Latin. I'm Italian and uh, you are Mexican, so you talk uh, Spanish. Uh, progettare in Italian, uh, project, proietto, that means uh, project towards something from Latin. No? So uh, the wishful acting is to project ourselves in the future in something uh, um, uh, more uh, wishful, yes, that we, we wish. Can can be K. So now I want to introduce the what are the natural business solution. Natural business solution actually are, uh, are new terms. And uh, when I met first time this this word, I say, okay, this is again uh, a European community want to give a new dress to something that we already know, okay, natural basis solution. And then also the word solution, later I will criticize a little bit. Um, but in the, in, in somehow um, for the European community was uh, um, to find uh, some, to create a kind of platform uh, on which, uh, many stakeholders, many actors, many government, national and locals gather together to uh, uh, find solution or actions for uh, the sustain to get uh, to reach the sustainable goals and uh, the sustainable sustainability of the cities and not only. Uh, so as uh, we can see, we can see the timeline of the terminology of natural business solutions start from 2002. So it's pretty recently terminology that use, has been used. Of course, it's uh, strictly connected with the sustainable development goals uh, of 2015. And uh, again, why now? Why now is the moment for change? Even more nowadays in this uh, situation of outbreak of uh, the pandemic, uh, 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 um, outbreak and uh, also the, the situation of climate change and so on and then uh, i can we can we can witness also a growing awareness of the value of nature for sure people concern more about the nature and uh, we cannot even the the fact that the business is important so uh, natural business solution can be also a business opportunity and um, in the European side, uh, as an inspiration and the world of leader, the market. So they want to get a kind of leadership in this, uh, in this field. Who can act with natural based solution? All of us, starting from the institution to the citizens, all of us, we can uh, uh, acting to, uh, and uh, operate uh, with uh, uh, nature based design solution or uh, actions and later we will see how uh, okay here is the european contest their uh, big uh, challenge and a big vision uh, toward the uh, this uh, uh, terminology and uh, they establish a very big framework for uh, of research and and innovation and uh, there are, of course, many, many um, uh, goals and uh, uh, action that uh, uh, European community want to, to uh, cope and want to boost. But what we are interesting, of course, we are in the enhancing sustainable uh, urbanization, uh, in the urban regeneration, natural solution for improving the well-being of the uh, in the urban areas and in detail some to find some solution to uh, uh, use uh, um, uh, in better way their resources 
and uh, benefit ecosystem and uh, uh, to get more uh, uh, um, energy efficiency. So in, uh, in Europe, we are more than five big projects, Horizon 2020 project. And here I just list for you some website and then maybe uh, if you we want, would like to have more information, I can share some of these uh, uh, slides uh, with you. And as you can see, we have many big amount of money that they put in the research and innovation. And uh, of course, I think everybody of you now are asking yourself, what if, what happened? If we delve in this beautiful concept, the beautiful world that I told uh, so far, I hope beautiful, I don't know, but for me are beautiful, uh, in, the, in the real world. Everybody has, is uh, very easy to, to talk about sustainability. We have to reach this one, we have to reach that one, we have to save energy, resources, and so on. But what, what happened if we, we put all this beautiful world, this matter in the real world? So I want to try to recap again from um, the end of last century and the, the movement of uh, uh, the environmentalism, um, which is um, something uh, sometimes good and sometimes not that good. In fact, create something that is, uh, I call it uh, urban green activism. And in fact, I, the question that uh, I, I ask to myself is uh, the green and the environmentalism and the activism in the environment is the cure of the curse. Sometimes it could be the cure because uh, engage people, but sometimes it could be also the curse because it doesn't give solution. And uh, I would like to share with you some image. For example, this is a, a very interesting project uh, starting from uh, Lucy Monge. I don't know if I can pronounce very well the, the name. Uh, uh, she is a Peruvian uh, artist and she started uh, this uh, project is called uh, uh, Planton Mobile. The aim is uh, to create, a, uh, to engage people and to create awareness to the people that is um, the, the uh, vegetation and the environment and the green spaces are basically right for everybody, not only for some elite. And she created some uh, very interesting performance where people engage and they were very happy to uh, 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 create also their own design and uh, go inside the city uh, to uh, create this uh, temporary performance with the, with the green. And then uh, uh, she, as an art, artist, tried to get some empty space in the city and tried to uh, um, establish in more, uh, uh, let's say, um, concrete way the, this, uh, this performance and uh, try to occupy some, some places in some uh, uh, empty space of the, of the city and she performed this uh, everywhere in the world in uh, in um, Central America in uh, Europe in uh, Paris uh, in uh, London and also in um, in US so every in uh, many cities she performed this uh, uh, kind of uh, um, activity engaging the people this is for example in the King's Crocs uh, place uh, in uh, in London, and people enjoy a lot and uh, try to understand that uh, the importance of the uh, 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 natural element and the green uh, in uh, uh, bring back in the city. Another uh, another uh, project of activism is um, called Above the Payment. Is this uh, this is a project uh, by Amale Andros and uh, his uh, her husband. Uh, she is uh, the actual dean of the columbia university and in the ps1 in um, brooklyn uh, the branch of the moment she created a very interesting project um, uh, engaging the people of uh, uh, the, the neighborhoods and create a new uh, uh, agriculture 
uh, new orchard and uh, with this big structure try to cross the the wall no of this uh, exhibition space so this is was a very interesting project where people engage where people enjoy a lot and start uh, also to grow up some uh, vegetables there and uh, also they bring there some chickens so to recreate a kind of rural environment in a in a city in, in a neighborhood such as is uh, brooklyn and here we can see some very interesting uh, uh, picture and also the complexity of the project sustainable with the uh, solar panel the the water collection and uh, all the energy uh, renewable renewable sources uh, and so on so very complex a very interesting uh, project however such as the performance of uh, Lucy Monge, this uh, project is uh, only temporary, it's an installation. And again, here, uh, this is another project uh, in China, in Shenzhen, which, which is one of the most populated uh, city, uh, mega cities now uh, in the world. Uh, this um, Chinese um, designer created um, um, a value farm in a uh, former industrial area he designed, they designed um, a new space for uh, urban farming and uh, agriculture. The space was very interesting. Look, in this uh, context typical of an uh, in industrial area, he created this uh, land of um, um, new uh, agriculture and people enjoy to this space and they were very happy and they also many of them selected this space as a, 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 a symbolic place where to take a picture for for wedding so it became a very interesting place uh, just uh, just to restore this area with uh, some uh, vegetable some orchard some uh, uh, green but this uh, uh, all those uh, beautiful uh, examples are actually um, temporary. So they don't have impact for the citizens. For the, uh, they have a very short term impact. In the world, uh, uh, after that, I say, okay, so how we can give more impact and eff effectiveness to the, our action, our natural based action uh, to the city? And I find uh, many urban greening tools. Uh, there are many um, uh, greening tools that uh, uh, all the municipality and government around the world they use to try to measure uh, uh, the quantity of ecological green. And uh, um, through, the, through the, the application of uh, greening indexes, that is good. That is good. So um, that we have uh, in Berlin, the uh, biotop area factor, this is an amazing uh, uh, tool for, to, to calculate how many green we have in the community. Or there is the Malmo green factor which is Sweden, in Sweden. So they calculate uh, how many square meters for each plot you can use uh, and you have to uh, live uh, in, in, uh, for, for green. We have the Seattle uh, green factor. They calculate the percentage of the green surfaces in the in the in the compound uh, poland a ratio of biological vital area very complicated name but they calculate again all the surfaces in shanghai we have this uh, currently uh, this uh, um, indicator that they want to in, uh, grow up the square meter per capita um, of green uh, area and eco urban ecosystem for the citizens so they have many uh, example many projects where they try to create a, a, a ring of of green inside the uh, the community um, we have uh, another i take this also green plot ratio because uh, of singapore this is very advanced city in this uh, in this term so they have a very detailed uh, uh, um, indexes and very detailed regulation for all the designer on how 
to use the green surfaces when uh, they design building or uh, new building or they have to regenerate areas or uh, but uh, again another critics i sorry today i criticize a lot uh, but these green tools um, they are very interesting however this green indicator do not directly relate to the citizen needs of social interaction recreation or well-being so what does it mean they are completely detached from the from the the citizens from the needs and from, from the, the the wants of, of citizens so on one hand we have activists that uh, engage people but they have uh, a very short-term impact in the other hand, we have uh, green tools that is uh, 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 indexes very interesting to create uh, something ecological in the in the in the in the room, but completely detached from the social interaction. So so what? So try to find action and and, uh, and solution. So I have to say the concept of uh, natural based solution itself is nothing new. It's not something that uh, 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 is new. We have already many uh, of uh, uh, solutions and te techniques and technology also in our hand. So it is uh, just the, the way to create in a systemic way, to create a, in somehow a system of, uh, uh, of uh, greening and uh, and uh, uh, nature inside inside the city. So the natural based solution actually record the needs of a systemic approach, as I say, with the things and nature, human being and nature, interaction between things and the, the world, complexity of our society, our uh, city. So we are familiar as a designer and architect or with this kind of uh, beautiful images so that uh, sustainable uh, and green built environment, uh, um, uh, planting trees to reduce air pollution or uh, urban drainage systems. So all, all this technology already, already real, already in our hand. Uh, or very interesting, this uh, draining, drainage action plan in, uh, in, uh, for uh, London or in Philadelphia, the green storm water infrastructure, they collect in water the uh, um, storming water or the roof garden of course or uh, in in france we have uh, now many facade uh, green facade you know in the city they create also market and the public space uh, and so on so technology also for interior design this is the airport of singapore we have already many tools in our hand and uh, i would like to share with you if I have time, uh, somebody tell me when uh, I have to stop, please. Um, anyway, I want to share these uh, two case studies, and then if I have time, some project that we did in Shanghai. So in, uh, I choose uh, Barcelona and New York, Barcelona in Spain and in New York, uh, because uh, they are beautiful city first, but they have uh, in, uh, toward this uh, natural based approach completely different uh, understanding and completely different starting point. Uh, Barcelona started from uh, a systemic view. It's a very interesting and complex uh, city, Barcelona, but they create uh, a city vision for 2050. So uh, the government, the government, the central government of Barcelona and Catalonia decide from the top to uh, create uh, this uh, new vision of green uh, 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 Barcelona. Try to connect in all the small garden, private and public, uh, with a big park and a, a big uh, uh, green uh, square and landscape uh, in the city. So this is a top-down approach and they create also types of space to make the city the network improve so defining all the elements that uh, the designer have to follow when they design or regenerate uh, spaces in the city they also uh, uh, um, verify the uh, uh, animals and uh, vegetable uh, and greening uh, um, trees uh, in, in, in 
most uh, suitable for, for the city. They give also, uh, again, some uh, uh, tools, some element that they call metabolism of the urban fabric in terms of green infrastructure and biodiversity. So every, every space, public space, every street road in Barcelona, since they have put this big plan, it should be done in this, uh, in this way. So they create also, also some visions, pretty interesting, but they want to arrive uh, first in a, in a real project. Okay, here in a project, and they did. Actually, they start already uh, with uh, this big infrastructure that uh, connect the, the, um, the northern part to the, to the, to the seaside. Uh, and they start to design this uh, Paseo de San Jean, uh, de San Jean. So through this small element connected with nature and uh, with a small green. So nothing new, but very important for the city. And they calculate, they improve the biodiversity of this area in, uh, in uh, more than 10% in a few years. So uh, starting from that, it was very intensive because this is a top-down uh, uh, approach from, from the, the government. But they started to create also some uh, tools and uh, some uh, activity for the citizens. So, for example, uh, they uh, make an uh, in, 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 in incentive for create a uh, vegetable garden or uh, uh, in, uh, in, the, um, in the communication and the, in environmental uh, education with schools, children, and so on. So starting from the top, they arrive to the city, uh, the citizens, and the citizens start to create some small association, some uh, 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 small activity in their uh, neighbor, neighborhood to create a more um, uh, sustainable and more uh, green uh, uh, places and uh, and uh, uh, place to live and uh, and uh, public spaces. Um, the second the second case study is uh, New York, which is uh, completely the opposite. The, uh, in New York, uh, actually, in like uh, 20 years ago, this uh, C2 studio started uh, to uh, a project of cohabitation strategy in uh, some very critical districts such as Queens or, or uh, again, Brooklyn on uh, the, the northern part of Manhattan, uh, started to uh, create, engage the people, giving them some pieces of land. Uh, to, so this is just a, a, a concept with some uh, orchards, some green, some uh, uh, small roof garden and so on, to give the possibility to the people, the citizen, to uh, create their own identity, to create or, uh, their uh, uh, activity uh, uh, through uh, these small pieces of, uh, of um, green uh, cities. Uh, so this is, was just, a, just a, a project, just a sketch, actually, just an idea. But then, time by time, uh, uh, this uh, fiber farm board and um, as uh, starting as a uh, as a, the first phase only with uh, uh, the uh, uh, citizen initiatives and then uh, in the second the third phase also uh, local government they uh, participate so they create a, a very sophisticated um, uh, uh, system of uh, um, um, urban agriculture, uh, starting from uh, defining the community farm, the commercial farm, institutional farm, and community uh, and community garden. They create a matrix of uh, uh, a frame of matrix uh, to uh, understand which are the what are the benefits for in the, in the point of view health, social, economic, and uh, ecological, and the, the many actors and uh, uh, how they can act. And now. In these uh, four types of uh, urban agriculture, now they have uh, more than uh, 200 uh, uh, institutional uh, farms and gardens linked to the uh, New York City housing uh, authorities and uh, public, uh, engage the public school and so on. So 
starting from a citizen initiative, they arrive to, I think this is, image is very powerful because every dot, every pixel of this image is a small garden or is a farm or is institutional farm or is a, a public uh, school uh, um, garden uh, belong this network and they create a, a pretty interesting uh, system in the city to arrive also at those kind of images. Now, I don't want to say that New York is a sustainable city, but they embrace uh, some path that I think uh, 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 can be, uh, can help and foster this uh, um, uh, re renaturing of, of the city. There are another project that is called uh, New York Commons that um, uh, help the, um, again, is a, is a deal between public and, uh, and uh, private. Uh, this is a completely private uh, uh, initiative uh, starting uh, from uh, this association, it's called uh, uh, 596 Acres is a living lost New York City. They calculate uh, with a GIS all the empty and the leftover places and uh, they sell those uh, 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 plots for one dollar. One dollar a lot. So the citizen can, can, uh, can uh, um, enter in their uh, website to search in Manhattan, in Brooklyn, where uh, is uh, they want to try to, to, to use or to buy their plots. They can uh, get also how the main information because it's all uh, georeferenced. They can also, with Street View, have uh, 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 an insight or have uh, uh, some picture of the, the plot and they can participate and then can, uh, they can buy the plot. This kind of uh, uh, um, activity uh, from a citizen bring the housing prevention development of New York to try to uh, uh, redevelop their uh, vacant places because uh, uh, they control the majority of the, of the city's vacant places. So in the, um, in the last uh, few years, uh, in many community gardens, if you go around for New York, you can, uh, uh, you can find many times this uh, label, which is uh, uh, belong uh, this uh, uh, public and private uh, uh, initiatives. And I think they are uh, a kind of beautiful. And another, another uh, uh, project uh, uh, in New York, in the East Village, born uh, due to the um, storm, the big storm of water that happened uh, in uh, 2000. Uh, uh, 12, I, I, if I don't remember, the Superstorm Sandy. Uh, they find uh, themselves the uh, old Manhattan in, uh, eh, here we have some picture in this situation, the big uh, flood. So um, some um, designer, they decide uh, a specific for the East uh, Village, they decide to map all the gardens and all the uh, green spaces in this uh, area of the city. They create a, a project approach, starting from the research, uh, field works, and then uh, uh, discussion, application with the, with, the, with the citizen, with the local government, and so on, and try to create uh, some uh, uh, project. So they start from the community engagement, talk with the people, educate the people, explain them how to uh, uh, foster and develop a more safe, uh, neighborhood for, for, uh, for the citizens. They design also uh, together with the, with the citizens. They spend a lot of, uh, a lot of time. They list, uh, of course, all the resources and all the, the components uh, to uh, regenerate and uh, uh, to create uh, a new um, natural system uh, within their, uh, their, uh, their city. And then they create a strategy uh, matrix in which they list here all the possible intervention, green uh, intervention. And here they list all the, in, the, in, the, in the column, they list all the potential garden 
that they can uh, uh, develop, uh, create uh, an online uh, 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 mapping and data collection so that people can also study and uh, uh, can understand uh, what they can do for their uh, uh, garden. They create a, a toolkit, uh, they call the toolkit for resilience strategy. There are actually 14 strategies to create a more resilient and more um, 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 let's say um, adaptable, uh, adapting uh, place uh, uh, for the for the garden, starting from, for example, the rainwater harvesting from the structures, uh, simple structure to contain the soil erosion. Uh, what kind of uh, 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 greening and uh, vegetable they can use for maintain their their uh, soil and so on and then they create a, a sort of uh, um, pilot project and application of this uh, uh, toolkit uh, the uh, final uh, image is uh, they find uh, uh, more than 10 uh, uh, garden uh, where the people want to participate and uh, uh, this uh, uh, area uh, uh, got a very uh, big potential in, in terms of uh, um, resiliency, uh, uh, sustainability, and also in terms of um, uh, um, well-being for uh, citizens living in this uh, neighborhood. So now, uh, uh, um, if I have uh, just a few minutes of time, I would like to show you a, a few the application that we did in uh, in Shanghai, in a specific in the shipping community in Shanghai, which is the neighborhood where our university insists. Uh, so just a, a very short introduction about Shanghai, because Shanghai is, is a mega cities, mega city with a. Uh, 24 million inhabitants and uh, so we are here this is the district of uh, uh, called the uh, yampu district the, the district is uh, of, uh, 1 million inhabitants and then uh, the shipping community which is uh, this uh, area urban area uh, uh, is uh, 100 uh, 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 around 100,000 uh, inhabitants so is a very big uh, city the, and the CP community was, uh, is uh, one of the um, Shanghai's first uh, worker village, uh, built uh, starting from the 1950 until uh, 1970, and then uh, uh, afterwards uh, with a uh, different uh, development, development uh, toward uh, education and uh, uh, services and so on. So here just a few aerial view to show you how is the community there very dense populated area um, and uh, here uh, is uh, our uh, no our college is uh, in the other side anyway and uh, uh, the um, this uh, project was um, created by um, uh, a chinese uh, uh, scholar with uh, nimi chin together with the dean of the design innovation uh, college where i'm um, working now uh, and they catch the momentum in which the local government was uh, the central government and then demand to the local government to reach some sustainable goals and uh, in the same time citizens uh, to were asking to a new sustainable uh, way to uh, manage their uh, their community so the university was in the middle of these uh, two forces, uh, private and uh, and public, uh, which is in uh, in China is very complicated issue actually when we talk about the public and private and so on. So uh, the the college uh, take this uh, momentum to to create this uh, open your space uh, project uh, and start to open their um, room and their classroom to to the citizen to the citizen. Uh, of the of the community to discuss what they would like, what they what they want, uh, which kind of activities they uh, wish uh, to have in their uh, uh, community, and they start also with the, together with the student and uh, and the uh, local residents and the teacher and the researcher to to 
make a proposal and, and design their, uh, their uh, uh, how they would like to see the future of their community. Uh, we also organize uh, an exhibition uh, to engage people and to try to let them uh, see what we can do or what happening around the world and what they like or what they not. Some public lecture, public lecture with the uh, scholars, uh, uh, Chinese, uh, foreigner, uh, where they talk and uh, discuss about uh, many possibility solution. Then uh, together with the student, we map all the uh, typology of the landscape within uh, uh, the uh, community. And uh, we try to create some illustration on how the public space can work with the green and uh, with the local uh, structure of the, of the community. Selecting, of course, some uh, uh, typical um, point uh, uh, in, in, the, in the community. Um, and then we create a, a, a game, as um, we have seen before, a, a kind of um, model, uh, uh, um, a model how to improve uh, through um, natural element uh, through the green uh, and, and um, trees uh, and a small uh, uh, orchard or small uh, kitchen garden how to develop the public space so we create some some model and then uh, we create some some project uh, reusing and proposing the uh, the reuse of uh, uh, leftover uh, places. I'm happy to show these uh, these uh, photos because uh, I know, for example, I can see here uh, Mauricio, and uh, he came uh, in uh, in Shanghai to visit us, and so he can maybe have a, a general uh, idea of uh, this uh, kind of. Uh, very small intervention. For example, this is a kinder, this is a uh, pocket garden of uh, 80 meter long of, uh, times uh, 2.5. So it's very uh, small element, but uh, all these uh, uh, element uh, uh, together regenerated and dedicated for uh, uh, public activity and, uh, and greening um, became a, a very interesting and very uh, very powerful uh, network within uh, the city. Here, there was a uh, um, waste collection places we transform in our lab. Actually, here now there is uh, our lab, and uh, uh, together with uh, with the uh, people living there in the community, they uh, created their own garden. And we allow them to use uh, uh, the our space to grow up vegetable. And here. Look at here in uh, those. This is the, some picture of the our meeting with the Mexican guy from the from Chihuahua campus uh, uh, when they came to visit us uh, in uh, in uh, in uh, in Shanghai. So um, this is a very small intervention that uh, create uh, uh, because the online community already exists. Uh, actually, already existed online community. We try to create an offline community. So these dots are all the dots in where we uh, make intervention. Then we have in our uh, 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 wish and in our uh, um, mind to to improve. And uh, actually, the uh, now the citizen are asking to the local government to go up to go ahead with this kind of uh, of uh, project. So. This OPEO space uh, is uh, specific uh, uh, in the context of Shanghai and uh, in the context of shipping community, but also we think that can be a, a model that can uh, also um, be applied for uh, not only in China, but also in other uh, contexts. So I finish my uh, presentation. I apologize, apologize if I take more uh, the time that uh, you um, you give me. But I hope to have shared with you some uh, different perspective, and uh, I think uh, um, also how the job of the architects and the designer is changing in this. Uh, uh, in, uh, in different contexts of the world and uh, in this uh, 
a new situation that we, we have to face uh, uh, now uh, ahead uh, for uh, the resilience and the sustainable development of our urban environment. Thank you for listening and for your passion. Okay, thank you, Tiziano. We have, uh, I think, five or six questions in the chat. The first one from uh, Eugenio Villarreal is, what kind of suggestion do you have to give us considering just uh, 350 millimeters of rainfall per year? The concept is beautiful in areas with plenty of water. Sorry, um, can you repeat, please? I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, yeah. the, the first question is what kind yeah. of suggestion you can give us considering just uh, 350 millimeters of rainfall per year the concept is beautiful in areas with plenty of water yes yes um, of course the each context and each uh, place has uh, their own uh, uh, problematic uh, the water and uh, when uh, there is a uh, draft or where there is a wet environment is competitive. I don't have uh, um, I don't have any uh, regulation. I don't have any any system to provide. Uh, as I try to to explain, every project start from uh, a very uh, deep understanding of the uh, 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 real situation. I don't think in technical solution. In fact, uh, before I criticize also the name of nature-based solution, because a solution is a very, um, how to say, uh, critical words, because we don't, um, we don't want to sell any, any actually uh, regulation or any, any formula. Uh, um, the issue is try to understand what are the potential, uh, uh, what are the, uh, uh, what the nature already uh, teach us, what already have, for example, in the in problemat in problem, uh, uh, con problematic uh, contests such as uh, the contests of uh, where the, the, the water is very limited and the, um, uh, there is a, uh, a season of drought and, and so on. So I think that the nature already um, have inside their system, inside their um, way to grow or way to react, to adapt to the context, some solution. So I don't have, uh, unfortunately, I would like to have a solution. I don't have answer for those kind of so technical elements. I have a process. I have a process that we try, to, uh, uh, in which I, I really uh, believe and I trust because uh, we test in a very difficult context uh, in, in China, which is the sipping community. And uh, who have been there can, uh, can be witness of these uh, uh, complicated uh, places. It's not so um, easy to say, ah, beautiful, we did a public space. So uh, take uh, five years uh, before to arrive uh, to uh, uh, propose some, uh, some solution very, that match with the local citizen, with the local climate, with the local environment, uh, with the pollution there. Because uh, in the first attempt that we did, for example, uh, all the small plants after one month's death, all, all of them, because we didn't calculate the strong pollution there. We didn't be able to, to understand. So we have to try to do attempt, we study again, the, the process of the nature, and we find a solution. So I'm sorry, I don't have a, a very technical, practical answer, but I can share with you the methodology. Methodology, study the nature, study the environment, understand in depth what is the, the, the context in which you are working, and then I think uh, uh, with a small attempt, you can, you can uh, find maybe some uh, uh, action that you can apply for, for the contest. Thank you very much. The second question is, which could be a good strategy, a strategy to engage people to a similar project as, as they presented? Yeah, yes. Um, 
I can tell you my experience. I can sh uh, share with you my experience. This is always a very big challenge. Uh, um, because sometimes uh, people, uh, maybe they don't want to be disturbed, they have their own business, they have their own family, um, they have um, uh, 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 their own activities with children and so on. So we, after many attempts, and I want to tell you also uh, one thing first, um, after to try to engage uh, the, the people, uh, afterwards, uh, they ask, ah, but you are asking to us to work uh, for, uh, for your project. No, 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 no. I say, we don't, I'm not asking you to work for us. So they ask for money. They ask for rewards. They ask, uh, so, okay. We understood that we completely, uh, uh, um, completely uh, mistake, completely uh, take a wrong, uh, a wrong, a wrong path. So what we start to do, we start to do things, very small, very small things. So we start to go there with our tools, our plans, and work in the, in the, in the area. So after a while, one elder arrived to look, and he starts to say, ah, no, you cannot do like this. You are doing wrong. B why uh, we are doing wrong? Because he know, for example, this is the north side, so the sun come from there. They have knowledge. So how to engage people? Go there and do action. Start to do things, and then many people come, and, and uh, they, they want to participate. Maybe because you are doing a, a wrong thing, a stupid thing, because as a Western, as Italian, in a Chinese context, even I have difficult to communicate with them. But uh, through the, the tools to plant uh, uh, some, some uh, uh, vegetables or some uh, onions or some uh, salad, they know uh, they, uh, the elders or, or, or the other people, they have knowledge. So they teach me uh, how, how to do in their uh, uh, environment. And afterwards, we engage the school. Uh, the, um, so the first thing is how to engage people do action first. Go there and try to do things, and then you will see the people will follow you. And the, the second one is uh, education. Education is, uh, is super important. We, uh, uh, even uh, all of us uh, as a, um, a teacher from uh, 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 university and so on, we uh, back to the primary school to the primary school to uh, demonstrate with, uh, with um, the, the student because they are the future generation. So the future generation, the, the young generation, they are the fu our future. So if we give them some tools, they can only uh, improve and get better for, to do a better city, a better um, uh, place where to live. This is uh, our humble, uh, suggestion on how to try to start to engage the people. Okay, thank you. The, the third question is from Ernesto Ramirez. It says, uh, I understand that one of the purposes of reintroducing nature to urban context is to increase biodiversity. Considering the situation of COVID-19, could increasing coexistence between living organisms have consequences in relation to Zoonotic diseases? Yes. Um, yes, but not only. I think uh, to reintroduce um, the uh, nature in, in the city. Uh, sorry, I, I restart. I restart. We did a, a, a small study and uh, we have seen that. Uh, 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 the biodiversity in cities sometimes is uh, uh, more diverse from the, the rural, rural, uh, rural uh, areas. Because in the rural areas, with uh, intensive agriculture, use uh, chemical products and so on, sometimes they gain, get flat the, the, the um, uh, biodiversity. Uh, uh, instead, in some uh, 
contests, some uh, urban contests, sometimes the biodiversity is even bigger than uh, not urban places. So it's not only the issue of uh, uh, bi uh, biodiversity or uh, is an issue from my point of view of uh, ecology of the environment. Um, is um, um, the issue to help make healthy a place uh, where it can be uh, can brave, where the keep people can sustain in somehow uh, uh, their uh, community. Um, look look at the situation where we are. Uh, at least in Italy, in North Italy, happen a virus, a simple virus, which is a kind of flu, but so concentrated, so strong that lock down one country. So people are not able to sustain themselves. So now uh, uh, everything, I think, has to be rethink in the direction of nature. That's why we think bring back the nature in, and respect and respect the, uh, uh, the nature. Um, so the bring back in, in the city is not only issue of the biodiversity, but uh, is also include our uh, um, uh, our sustainable and to sustain us in the, our our life. I don't know if I uh, uh, reply to the to the question, but um, this is what I think. <clears throat> okay, thank you, Tiziano. There are, I'm going to join two questions uh, from Ruben Valdison and Nayeli Gonzalez. The first one is how to do how do you believe that a greener city can boost create creativity in citizens and create a stronger sense of community? And the second the one is you talked before uh, about cities that already started to implement sustainable strategies, but which do you think are the first steps or how can we start to make urban changes in cities where there is little or non sustainable strategies applied right now? How can we start transforming our cities? Mm -hmm. So, um, yes, um, I, I, uh, this, the, the second question, I already say something before. Um, there are many ways uh, and uh, sometimes there are lucky, lucky situations in which uh, government and private and uh, university institution and so on, they get it together. Sometimes there is completely divergent uh, uh, idea or uh, uh, understanding of the same uh, uh, topic. So I think the most important thing is try to do some uh, uh, action and uh, try to start things with uh, maybe little. Uh, I think uh, to improve uh, uh, and to de uh, develop our series and in a, in, a, in a different, I don't want to say new, but different direction that is uh, uh, now is um, uh, starting with small things, small things uh, all together, they can uh, be very in, uh, impact, impactful on the wall, uh, on the whole uh, system. So this is uh, uh, again uh, uh, my point of view and there are uh, cities and the go local government that they are more advanced in somehow and other that uh, are waiting for some, uh, for some uh, 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 condition to, to act uh, and so on, or maybe some of them, they don't know how to do. So that's why I think uh, uh, we have to uh, try to do, as a designer, first of all, our first our decision. And uh, the first question, the question was uh, uh, um, about, um, can you help me, Pablo, uh, in, for the first uh, question? Pablo is mute. Sorry. The first question uh, is, how do you believe that a greener city can boost creativity in citizens and create oh. a stronger sense of community? Oh, yes, yes. This is a very good question. Uh, how the green city, the creativity. I, I think uh, um, that's why it, at the beginning of my presentation, uh, I started with, um, uh, the 
the, um, uh, the, the subtitle uh, Greening uh, uh, Activism, Environmental Activism, the cure of the curse. The cure, because in that case, as we have seen, the example of uh, Lucy Monge from, from Peru, she created a very uh, interesting, a very impactful uh, uh, engagement of the people. She engaged a lot of the people. Uh, uh, the creativity of the people expressed them myself because uh, thanks to the to just to to how to bring back in the city the 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 green and the and the um, uh, trees and uh, the vegetable they uh, open their creativity and which is very surprising uh, who uh, riding the bicycle who riding the skates and so on so I think uh, this is a combination. Uh, that uh, became in a natural uh, way in uh, in somehow, and this is create a very big creativity. So, uh, is the in some time in some uh, how can be the cure because the start starts, but then those kind of activism is uh, uh, as I say before is a, a short term impact. So. Uh, the, the the green city and the uh, renaturing city i think will bring very big creativity for different type of just to uh, think how to cultivate in the in the in the um, uh, for example in the balconies now for example in milan everybody want a balcony before nobody was thinking about uh, uh, the balcony. They want a fancy view, a beautiful window, but all, people almost forgot the balcony. Nowadays, everybody, they are talking about uh, a balcony. They are introducing a new regulation that the, all the new buildings, all the regeneration of buildings, they have to have a lodge of or balconies. So this is already impacting in our, in our uh, 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 normal life. So uh, yes, I think, um, again, uh, the natural, uh, the nature will uh, start uh, by the relation with the human being, uh, uh, the, the creativity of uh, uh, each of uh, each of us. Okay, thank you, Tiziano. The, the last question is is a personal question. Uh, in cities like Chihuahua, uh, where the density is low. Uh, here we follow the spread uh, model city of the south of the United States. How can it affect the uh, successful insertion of these green areas in the urban area? The mm -hmm. Does the low density of cities help uh, or affect to achieve it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, this is a, uh, you, you touch, uh, in my point of view, a very important uh, point. Um, we uh, in uh, you're talking about density, no? In a low density contest, uh, probably uh, you feel to have uh, 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 already plenty of space in for to use for the green, but uh, sometimes. Uh, uh, in the in the sprawl in the low density contest, uh, I think I, I don't know the reality of Chihuahua, but you mentioned the South uh, American typology. So those spaces uh, are not used at all. So uh, for several reasons, for safety issue, because it's only uh, um, uh, a road to connect a house with the uh, shopping mall with the uh, other uh, cities and so on. So actually we are talking about uh, urban spaces or semi urban spaces, but actually are not used at all. So I think for the uh, urban sprawl, how to, to uh, um, regenerate, I think, uh, uh, talk about density but the density of nature intensify the uh, natural element because if we don't use it and we use only to cross to connect house with our uh, working places or house with uh, the shopping mall or commercial hour um, area live for the nature to so intensify the density of uh, of the of the 
environment and the nature. I mean, this is a, a kind of a mirroring, no? Uh, uh, where there is empty, you have to make it full. But make it full doesn't mean to build, means to create, uh, intensify the, the nature. Uh, with um, Emanuele Giorgi, many years ago, we started a project that is called Rural Architectural Intensification, where intensification was uh, the, again, the create density for the, uh, the nature. Also in rural area, which uh, looks like everything uh, kind of idyllic or kind of uh, beautiful places, I, as I say before, we evaluate that uh, the biodiversity sometimes is lower in the rural area instead of the cities because of, as I say, use of the chemical issue and so on. So also in that context uh, where looks like kind of natural, but it is not, we need to intensify even more the, the, uh, the nature. This is what I, what I believe and what I think uh, uh, really can uh, change uh, uh, in somehow the path of our development. Whatever it is a sprawl or dense city, uh, draft or, or, or wet, uh, cold or hot. Uh, in uh, every context, I think nature teach us how to survive and how to create a good environment. Okay, thank you, Tiziana. That's all the questions we have uh, today. I, we okay. want to thank you for your participation you. and this interesting uh, lecture that you give us. And uh, and when I and in Spanish, muchas gracias a todos los demás. Por, por haber asistido. Los queremos aprovechar primero pues para, para invitarlos a la próxima plática que vamos a tener el próximo jueves de la arquitecta Lara Alonso de Madrid de España con el tema de ciudades invadidas. Vamos a seguir con el tema de la ciudad. Entonces ahí en el chat van a ver una forma de registro en el cual les pedimos ahí si lo pudieran llenar que nos pudieran dejar su, su correo para hacerles llegar próximas invitaciones y también para compartirles el el video, este, tanto este como el de la conferencia del doctor Emanuel Giorgi de la semana pasada. Entonces, para hacérselos llegar o bien compartirles el Google Drive porque son archivos que son un poquito pesaditos, pero ahí en el, en el mail que nos hagan llegar ahí en la forma, con todo gusto se los, se los compartimos. Y pues muchas gracias, Tiziano. Gracias. Thank you so much. Thank you to, for all of you to listening and uh, to give me the chance to share with you this uh, my thought. Thank you very much. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you. Ciao. Gracias, Pablo. Gracias, Ingeniero. Thank you, Dr. Tiziano. Thank you. Thank you so much.